they said that I should be denounced and I should never be hired again. So that was pretty tricky. So I then hired a lawyer straight away and I said, you've got to withdraw that statement and all that sort of stuff and pay my costs, which they did. That was good. But still, the thing about these great attacks that people launch on you is once they've launched the attack on you, it sticks. They, as long as they throw enough shit, some of it will stick. So they, you know, you, you sort of walk around. But weirdly, when I walk around the streets, people come up to me and go, thank God for you. But when I walk around on Twitter, people come up to me and go, I hope you and your family die soon. You yeah. Know, it's that standard, standard game. I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is a British actor and activist. He's also the founder of the Reclaim Party and hopefully the next mayor of London, Lawrence Fox. Welcome to the Rubin Report. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine, sir. I am glad to talk to you across the pond. Uh, for my American audience that maybe doesn't know who you are, can you give me the quick recap of Lawrence Fox before we talk about all the reasons that you got yourself into trouble and how you got into politics and all that? Well, I was an actor and um, actually some of your American fr friends will know me because uh, I got off the plane at JFK once and a, and a guy was helping me with my bags. He said, I love you in the uh, Inspector Lewis show. So um, that was quite sweet. I was an actor for many years. And then, yeah, like you say, I got into trouble. <laughs> I got canceled. All right. So let's talk about your cancellation. You were on uh, a British show called Question Time. It's about, about a year ago now, and we're gonna play a clip in just a second, but can you just sort of set up what Question Time is and how you even got involved in it as an actor and uh, a, a little bit of the behind the scenes portion? Sure. Yeah, um, so Question Time is a sort of topical panel show, uh, political panel show in the UK. It's been around for donkey's years. and. Um, it's usually quite very left-leaning, you know, and sort of very establishment. But by some accident, they invited a slightly more centrist panel on. And I was promoting, because I'm a musician as well, so I was promoting an album. And someone said to me, do you want to go on Question Time? And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, because it's a sort of family tradition in the UK. People just shout at the TV and go, it's rubbish. No, you're wrong. And I thought, I'll get to do that on live TV. Um, and then, yeah, this uh, a woman started asking questions of uh, of me, saying what asking what my opinion was about something, and I said what my opinion was. She disagreed and said I wasn't allowed an opinion because I was white. Yeah. So I was like, oh, hang on, that's racist. So I said, don't be racist. And then, uh, boom. Yeah. So let's we're going to just throw to that one thirty second clip right now. Let's be really clear about what this is. Let's call it by its name. It's racism. We're the most tolerant, lovely country uh, uh, in Europe. Let's Says a white privileged What worries boring. me about your comment is you are a white privileged male who has oh, no experience. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, can I just... I can't I, help what I am. I was born like this. It's an immutable so you, characteristic. So, so to call cannot, me a white privileged male is to be racist. Unfortunately, you're being racist. You cannot dismiss. OK, OK. So, boy, you claimed that you're entitled to opinion, even though you're white. How radical of you. It's awful, isn't it? I mean, we should have learned by now <laughs> that you're not allowed an opinion, immutable characteristics ahead of everything else. But it was weird. I, I, I was not, I didn't know it was such an enormous landmine in the UK. So it was, it was crazy. It, the next day I got a bit of support and then it just went mad. Left uh, Twitter went went for me. Yeah, so can you talk about that experience? Cause you know, obviously we're in the midst of this just insane cancel culture thing. And on any given day, we're taking out Pepe Le Pew or Mr. Potato Head or Aunt Jemima or, so, or sometimes real people too. Um, but can you just talk about what it feels like to be the target of that? Because that's when you came on my radar. Suddenly I was, you know, it was basically like, oh, here's a guy telling the truth. And then just to watch the mob descend on you. It was, it was, I was okay until the actors union, the uh, equity, the actors union, you know, you know how um, non-left wing show business oh, is, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, They're very fair. So, very So modern. they went, they asked, they, they asked, they said that I should be denounced and I should never be hired again. 
So that was pretty tricky. So I then hired a lawyer straight away and I said, you've got to withdraw that statement and all that sort of stuff and pay my costs, which they did. That was good. But still, the thing about these great attacks that people launch on you is once they've launched the attack on you, it sticks. They, as long as they throw enough shit, some of it will stick. So they, you know, you, you sort of walk around. But weirdly, when I walk around the streets, people come up to me and go, thank God for you. But when I walk around on Twitter, people come up to me and go, I hope you and your family die soon. You yeah. Know, it's that standard, standard game. Right. So what would you say to the people who would say, oh, but this is just some online thing then. It's just the Twitter mob and you should get over just people being mean on Twitter. You don't have to be on Twitter. Well, it, t Twitter is pointless and a sewer of humanity, which is fine. But um, it's but also it does affect people in real life. Like uh, the mayor of London, the sitting mayor of London at the moment, Sadiq Khan, he's like, he takes sort of virtue signaling our identitarianism to a whole new level of division. He called me in the newspaper when they were asked for a comment about me. He called me a far right, extreme far right guy. And I'm like, OK, that's pretty uncool because I've got two kids. I can walk to, around to the shop if someone who's only ever read that little bit of newspaper, mm -hmm. which is the, the capital city newspaper, and someone decides they want to put a brick or a knife into me, then this whole sort of freedom of speech thing, because I'd actually defend his right to call me an extreme far right, whatever he wants to call me. He's a bit of a wanker, to be fair, yeah. so I don't care. But um, We'll get to him in I, just a moment. You know, when they say that they go freedom of speech and then freedom of consequences of the freedom of speech, I'm like, if my kids get attacked or if I get attacked, who's the consequences on? Are they on you? And also, can you say one simple thing that I've ever said, which is even vaguely by wing? Right. So, OK, so basically the, the usual story unfolds. You say a very moderate thing in line with British values, defending free speech, which is really what you were doing on the on the panel the whole time. Uh, next thing you know, the mayor's calling you far right. There's a gajillion hit pieces. You've got the union going after you, the Twitter mob, like all of that stuff. And then you sort of, I think once you got over it, you kind of embraced it because your life in the last year, I mean, you started a political party, you're running for mayor. You, you kind of ran right into the fire. You can't do anything else. There's no, there's no option. There's no, I, I'm, I'm good friends with Winston Marshall as well. And, you know, I've been watching from Mumford's and watching while he's trying to put out the he's trying to bow to the woke mob and you know and he's, he's actually trying to do the right thing really but i'm just sat there going don't do it buddy yeah don't do it to be clear and he's the he's the guitarist guitarist right for mumford and sons banjo player ba mumford, banjo player yeah. for mumford and sons he's the one who dared to recommend andy knows scary book about Antifa. I'm mates with both of them. Yeah. They're, and they're, I'm on the phone to both of them. And Andy's Andy's in the UK at the moment because I want Andy to come and work for, for, for me for the party. I really would like that. So um, I'm mates with both of them. It's hilarious. And they, they love each other. And then this, this sort of public crap storm going on around, well, you know, different approaches to deal with a woke mob who you can never say sorry to. Yeah. They love it. Has he heard any of your feelings about this? Like that you just can't apologize, that this is gonna get you nowhere? I mean, he's not even in the band anymore, right? At least temporarily. I was speaking, we were laughing about it on, on the phone. You know, it's really difficult. It's like, how do you, if you're, a, he's a truly compassionate, gentle guy. He doesn't want major conflicts in life. I'm a, I don't mind being punched in the face for stuff I believe in, but I think he was, he's just trying to do the right thing. And actually I, you know, I think you can, people that do give in, they need more love because, you know, it's, it's just people hanging around the guillotine, right? Going more, more beheadings. You know, that's what they're like. It's, 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 oof, gives me the shivers. I like standing up to them. They yeah. need it. Well, in, they, they do need it. So, all right. So assuming that you're not far right, I'm willing to go on this adventure with you. Okay. Because in your Twitter bio, you describe yourself as a fierce liberal. What does liberal mean to you at this point? Because I know there's a slightly different British version. You know my feelings on classical liberalism. Do you think the word liberal can be saved? Does it even make sense in, in the sort of modern context anymore? I think, yeah, you do have a slight uh, difficulty with it in America, don't you? I've got some American friend bought me a mug saying liberal tears still warm, but, so, but that's leftists to us here. Right. Um, I am, I, my liberalism is, would now probably, with the Overton window where it is in society, would probably be seen as quite right wing. You know, I want people to get on with their own lives, make their own decisions about what they do and keep as much of their money as possible and not pay it to an enormous state. So, you know, it's just about being free to make your own decisions in life. That's where my liberalism comes from. Um, 
And yeah, I think we can say that because ultimately it's going to be, weirdly, it's going to be the left of centre liberals that, that save the situation because until they start standing up, there's no point in people like me going, guys, there's a big problem here with freedom of speech. We're going to have a big fight if we're not careful. We need people from the left to come in and go, this isn't cool. And it's starting to happen, isn't it? They're, they're eating their own as well. Yeah, what, what signs are you seeing? Like, I, I've just sort of come around to, to that, the, the sane liberals just need, they don't have to change their beliefs at all. I mean, I wrote a whole book defending liberalism, but they have to ally with the moderates on the right, which I think is most of America at this point, just freedom loving people and we can debate about tax rates and all that kind of stuff. Do you see some signs that the that the decent liberals are waking up and fighting some of the woke stuff because there's not much here. There's just not much. It's a it's it's a very um, it's a very difficult subject for politicians certainly to get involved with. We've got a conservative party here, which is I mean they're not even vaguely conservative. They're almost a socialist party on their own, and then the opposition party is even more left wing than that. So we're in we're in difficult difficult times actually. Because it's an attack on everything, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's not an attack on, um, you, you know, it's an attack on values, uh, love of family, love of country. It's, it's an attack on all the things that are, were okay to be, uh, you know, to, to love. And, and we had this horrible murder a few days ago in London of this uh, girl. And then there was a vigil held for her and the police got... Um, too too involved really because they've they've turned we've turned, basically turned into a police state here and within minutes it turned into a leftist demonstration so we're now getting we're getting what you have in portland starting to the rumblings of in london screaming neurotic lunatics going on like the one minute they'll go whose streets are streets and then they'll be on to fuck the police kill the police they just they don't know what they're screaming about but they're angry yeah who, are they organized in any way? I mean, this is the big debate in America. Is Antifa just an idea? Like, is Andy tracking this? Andy, no. Is is that why he's there right now? Yeah, I, I, Andy was there the other day. Yeah, he's tracking it. Um, I don't think they're that organized. I think social media is helpful, isn't it, for, for crazy people with crazy views to get together. So, but, but what are they um, even protesting? I mean, from a British perspective, what are they protesting? Or they just don't know? I, yeah, I, I, I went to the protest, so I was like, I need to know what these guys are upset about, and I couldn't work it out. They were just screaming. It was one thing to the next. You know, it was meant to be about this this dreadful crime, this murder of this woman, but it became about something else. It was like, let's kill the police, and it was ACAB, all cops are bastards. And it's like, well, are they? You know, I don't understand. No one knew what was going on. They were just marching up and down the street, and then they went and lay down in Trafalgar Square for a while. I think basically none of either they weren't paying attention at school, or they're not interested in history. Yeah. Or anything. How, yeah. how do you think the lockdowns fit into this? Because you guys are still in pretty severe lockdowns right now. We are in severe lockdown. No one's paying any attention to it, though. It's so British. It's like, mm -hmm, yes, we might. They, whenever they poll the British people, they're like, are you all in lockdown? Are you supportive of it? And the Brits are like, yes, absolutely, we're supportive. And then I walk out my door and down the street and I look at, on the window. It says, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. And then you look downstairs and people are having a drinks party. So it's, um, it's, it's do as I uh, say, not do as I do. Yeah. So, all right. You're a radical right wing guy trying to defend liberalism. Extreme right wing. Guys. Extreme, Extreme right winger trying to defend liberalism. <laughs> so you walk in through the fire. You you decide, okay, I'm not going to be canceled. I'm going to see what happens. And then, how did you make the shift to say, well, I'm actually going to freaking start a political party and run for office? It's one thing to survive it, but then to really say, I'm going in and I'm going to do something. Well, it's just such a gap. So like we did, um, I mean, after this, we did, I had a feeling that there was a large constituency of people that just weren't being allowed to express themselves. So um, there's just this huge freedom of speech hole. So I thought that needs mending because we have to have a proper debate about everything, uh, including lockdowns, actually, weirdly, because they, have, they haven't been talked about. They've just been, you must accept that lockdowns are a good thing and there's no debate allowed. So yeah, I got approached by a, a very rich businessman who said, do you, what do you want to do? Because you will not lie down. You're like, you keep standing up like some, like some stupid boxer who doesn't know when the battle is finished. And I said, well, I should do some media. And I actually mentioned you because you're actually responsible for some of this, as I told you before. Uh, and again, I apologize, um, you know. <laughs> and um, he said, no, no, you need a political party. 
He said, they'll only ever listen to you if you have a political party. So weirdly, we, we started up the political party and um, things suddenly the culture became important again to our conservative government because they're trying to hold me off on the on what is what would essentially be in the liberal side of things, but is now the sort of extreme far right, as our lovely mayor calls me. Yeah. So this morning I, I read the I went to the Reclaim website and you you basically write an open letter describing why you started the party and, and what the beliefs are. And uh, I thought it was quite perfect, actually. Um, can, you, can you describe some of the principles, these again, these crazy right wing liberal principles that you that you're defending? Well, I think it's uh, it's really simple. I'm defending an idea, so it's not really about me anyway. So, that, you know, you should be you should be able to protect yourself from attack. If you believe in freedom of speech, you believe in everybody's freedom to speak, right? And um, so, that's what I stand for. I stand for the, the the biggest and broadest debate to be had possible. And um, then, what I've done, sort of practically, is I've commissioned, which is actually going to be quite big news in England soon, which is going to shock them. I've commissioned a, a full and huge legal review of our of all of the legal impingements on freedom of speech. Because you know, you've got your Equality Act going through, and what's it called, HR one or yeah. whatever's going through in America. Yeah. Now we had this shit. They did this in like 2010 in the UK. We have our own Equality Act where people are, have protected characteristics and they're not they're not equal under the law. So we, all of this stuff is really dangerous legislation. And um, I've commissioned a, a full review and there's some very eminent top, top, top people who have put together a suggestion for the British people and for the parliament about how we can lose division in society. But it's weird when you try and lose division, you tend to attract divisive people. Yeah, it, it seems to be. Are, are, you, are you worried that in essence, you'll sort of like just at a like practical level that you'll sort of split the conservatives because some conservatives will go with you, the rest will stay with the conservatives. And then ultimately you just help labor and the labor party has, as you sort of said before, kind of gone off the rails. I think the Conservative candidate in London is not, he's a, he's such a sweet guy as well, which I find so difficult because he's a really lovely guy, but he's not, for some reason, he's not creating the right waves. So, um, no, I think what I want and what would be best would be for me and Sadiq, our mayor, yeah. who likes to race bait on a daily basis, um, to debate and talk about our capital city and, you know, what's his vision for it. And because, you know, he's, he's got this, uh, it's called the commission for diversity in the public realm. He's got, and it sounds lovely. Doesn't oh, it's, it? it always I'm sounds like, lovely. <laughs> it always sounds yeah. lovely. But it's just like, let's tear down all our statues. And, um, he's already had to kick one member off. Who's an avowed surprisingly for the left, extreme left and avowed anti-Semite. Who would have thought it? Shocking. In the Labour Party? Really I odd, can't believe it? it. Are you? It's weird, isn't it, right? The people that call you racist, they are the exact thing they accuse you of. So um, he's, uh, I, sorry, I've lost my, my train now. Well, um, well, so in essence, though, you, you, want, to, you yeah. want to debate Sadiq Khan. And, yeah. and do you yeah. sense that that could happen or, or is it a pipe dream? I mean, will he do it? Who knows, man? We've got um, we've got a pretty cool campaign. Uh, on the Thursday, we're going to start um, dropping the, you know, some of the more importantly con controversial but needing to be said statements to London. I mean, look at the end of the day, London is like the cathedral of woke, like any metropolitan centre. So, I, for me, the most important thing is just to raise the voice for the people that don't get to speak. That's it. It's the only reason I do it. So, all right, so you guys are seeing some violence in London uh, with sort of sort of newish violence. There's the lockdowns. We were mentioning right before we started recording, that, you know, we have a couple of friends in common, Douglas Murray and, and Peter Lloyd and a few other people. Peter basically has fled London and everyone that I talk to that's in London is really not happy about what's going on there. What, what besides the free speech d stuff has Sadiq Khan done wrong? Well, he's um, he's a, he's he, what has he done right? Really, is the way you have to start. All right, fair he's, he's terrible. We've got a surging knife crime problem in London, and then that's made almost unsolvable because of the way that he stokes racial tensions between people. So you know, he calls you a racist if you try and deal with knife crime. He would call you a racist. He's um, he's obviously trying to tear down all of our um, 
of our shared history. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he, what did he say the other day? He said something like, there's just no reason why there should be 65% of these people should be white men working in this particular field. And you're like, hang on a minute, dude, just slow down. This country is 83 or 85% white. Of course, it's going to be more white people. You know, it, he's, it's this very specific demonization of white people. And fortunately, he has a huge constituency of white people who also hate themselves as well. You know, the sort of white uh, urban liberals. And it's, it's like, it's really sad because most of the working class in the United Kingdom would usually vote Labour. You know, they, they would. But Labour don't represent Labour. They don't represent Labourers and they don't represent actually the important things, which are class issues in this country. You know, Britain is constantly and frequently, I think just after New Zealand, and I can't remember where else, we are the most tolerant country on earth, you know, in terms of like tolerance of intermarriage and all this sort of stuff. So I don't know why at the centre of the altar of woke, our mayor is trying to turn around and go, you know what, guys, you're all racists. It's like, come on, man. It's 2021. We've got to get a new story. Yeah. Well, it's basically it's all they got. Right. I mean, that that's in essence what you were saying in that clip earlier. Like it's it's all they got without that. What what policy could he possibly be pushing that makes any sense? I know he he doesn't have any policies. So he's and also the worst part of it is he's he's kind of a government stooge as well. So the government, the government are bribing him to make him look bad. And it's it's just so political. And I I can't bear it. So when I get into involved in this stuff, I just go, listen, I don't have any lobbies or vested interests. I'm not I'm not supported or funded by these people. So this is what I would do to solve X, Y and Z problem. So we'll just have to see. Does it feel to you guys like a lot of this stuff has been imported from the U.S.? that our bad ideas or the the bad ideas that have taken root here suddenly are exported all over the place? Yeah, I mean, when you go to what the BBC described as a largely peaceful protest of the Black Lives Matter last summer, there were people walking around going, hands up, don't shoot. And I'm like, our police force isn't armed. (laughs) They literally don't have guns. Guys. We've imported this straight from America, which is a great honor to America because, you know, we love American trends and all of that stuff. But this is one American trend I wish had stayed behind. But at least you get to keep Meghan, right? <laughs> well, apparently she's going to run for president now. That's that's the new meme we're hearing. And she'd win. Oh, She'd win, wouldn't she? Where are we going to where win. are we going to go? Fiji. Fiji, that's the spot. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, that, that's, that's the spot. So. All right. So America's importing this or exporting this stuff. You guys are, are importing this stuff. Um, what's it going to take? Is it, is it okay? We can take back London by, by getting a sane mayor. Like what, what's the real move to really reverse this thing? Well, there's an interesting thing that's developed now. So a, um, there's a there's a constituency on the in the north of Britain called the Red Wall, which was always held by the Labour Party, and it they, it totally fell down the friction and went to the Conservatives. They lent their votes to the Conservatives. Some constituencies hasn't hadn't voted Conservative for a hundred years, and um, today. Um, one of the Labour, weirdly, why would it be the Labour guy who's been done for sexual harassment and had to resign in, immediately? It's weird um, that that's always them too, isn't it? It's so bizarre. What's going on here? It's almost like they're the exact thing they accuse us of. <laughs> um, so that he's had to stand down today. So there's now going to be a by-election and it'll be very, very interesting to see what happens up there. But ultimately, I think if you can open up the dialogue and you can say, listen, there's 70 million people in this country. We're not all racists we're not and i will stand up and say we're not then you you it's you know these guys have been doing this for decades haven't they marching through our universities and even my my kids right my youngest son said to me i'm sorry if this is racist dad but mum is a better cook than you (laughs) and i'm like what say what now so they're in they're filling it in their heads, like constantly. When Trump got ill, um, well, he didn't really get ill. Did he really get COVID? But when they- uh, Whatever, two days he disappeared. They announced it in the school assembly, uh, you know, and then everyone started cheering. And it's like, my little son was like, I didn't want to cheer. I don't want to cheer when someone's not very well. So they, they're hammering it in. The educational establishment is really bad. I think what you have to do is they march through the institution slowly, we'll march straight back in. So do you think the institutions are, are worth saving or would you say that they should be just rebuilt or, or just totally new institutions? 
I, I think they have to be reclaimed. That, I think that's why I call it reclaimed. Yeah, um, yeah. They have to be reclaimed. It's 95% of academics are pretty hard left um, in university, and that's not cool. You can't have a good debate when 95% of people agree with each other. Um, they've bought into, even my old acting school has bought totally bought into critical race theory and anti-racism and stuff like that. But I thought it was excellent what Prince William said when he said, this family is not racist. And that was a deliberate little spike at his brother and his sort of weird anti-racist narcissist crap from his puppet master wife, you know. Yeah. What, what's going on with that whole situation? You know, I covered it for like two seconds on the show. I, I didn't watch the full Oprah interview. It's not that interesting to me, honestly, from an American yeah. perspective. We just have bigger problems at the moment. Um, but but is Megan gonna like take down the whole monarchy? That's kind of what it feels like, like that she's gonna import all of these horrible ideas and just that this is a threat to everything. I don't think she will succeed because I think there's a huge amount of goodwill there. Like if you look at the photos of that wedding, particularly where they're, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much goodwill. I mean, you know, we have princes and princesses in this country, right? You're not going to hate your prince and princess. So there was so much goodwill, but what we cannot abide is what she's done, which she's trying to, to make her, a, she's a being political, which, you know, you shouldn't be doing as a Royal. I think she's just taken control of a very compassionate guy. And she's, she's realized she's not going to be the center of attention. So she's gone, right, well, I don't want to be in the royal family anymore. And then, you know, in true kind of vengeful narcissist style, she's gone, um, right, I'm going to take them down. So she's accused all of them of being racist by not being particular about what it is. And it's a very, it's a very you know, and I know how powerful that insult is because I get called racist all the time. And it really affects you, you know, especially if you've got a heart. You're like, ow. I was not expecting to be called that. Um, so I think what will happen is the royal family will just find a very cool, very calm way of going. Bye now. Stay over there. How does the media play into all of this? Because you guys are well known for your tabloid media. I've had the Guardian call me racist and far right and all of that stuff. So even though we've obviously exported a lot of the bad ideas. One of the things that I think that you guys have exported is some of like the tabloid journalism kind of stuff. Like it's now everywhere here. It's like basically there's no difference between the, the National Enquirer and the New York Times at this point. Yeah, former newspaper. Um, yeah. It's, it's, very, it's, it's very sad. It's been particularly sad over lockdown <clears throat> because the government briefed the, and they're now finding redacted statements within the scientific advisory group that have been saying we need to get the people frightened and stuff like this. So the government have briefed the media and the media have loved it. They've then set the whole population on fire and fear. And now everyone is terrified and they can't move. So I think the media are, you know, but it's free speech, right? I'm like, say what you want, man. But just can we just have more of the whole picture instead of just this very focused picture on on what we want to what we want to attack and what is you know relevant to to, to your kind of selling newspapers narrative it's been bad but even piers morgan got eaten by the crocodile yeah you know? How, how's piers doing right now after he walked off the set well, he was i was quite friendly with piers and then um we fell out over covid um so i've I've been saying to, that he's uh, now that he's realized because he jumps on bandwagons, as you know, in America, you know, when Shapiro, when Shapiro just ate him for breakfast <laughs> over the assault rifle stuff. So he's doing the same thing. He's just reinventing himself. We've got a new news channel opening up in the UK called GB News, which is run by Andrew Neil, who's probably one of the mm -hmm. best journalists we have in the country. And hopefully that will bring a bit more balance into it. But they're already trying to get that cancelled as well. Yeah. Are, do you guys have like a, like who are the British voices that we should know that that we don't know like who else who else definitely is help putting neil. you on on the map right now definitely andrew neil um the the newspapers that have not given in to the woke agenda but some of them have uh, most of them have but the telegraph newspaper hasn't really given in the, the times did this horrible evisceration of jordan peterson <laughs> yeah. the other day and i was just like fuck you yeah you know, fuck you. I was so, uh, so and that was meant to be a sort of centrist, moderate paper. And they're just like, stab, stab, stab. So the Telegraph, the Express, which, you know, if you'd said the Express 10 years ago or 15 years ago in the UK, they would have gone Nazi. But now it's like a bastion of centrism. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. What about, because uh, I, know, I know what people will say. Okay, 
you guys are saying you're downplaying racism and blah, 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 blah. What, what about the real uh, people that actually are racist? The, the real far right people, whatever, whatever influence those groups have. First off, do they have any real influence at this point? Because in American context, there are no legit political racist groups. There just aren't. That isn't to say there aren't racist people there are, of course, but they have been marginalized. Are you trying to say that the left create imaginary bogeymen? I'm starting to think we think suggest? in a similar way. Um, the Yeah, so the far right in England, um, it does exist, but I mean, there's probably, a, it's not very many of them. You know, it's not, and they don't really have any power. No one listens to them. It, it, no, but also they're having the best time ever because the thing is everyone's a racist. Yeah. They're just hiding in plain sight, right? <laughs> no, I think, I think the thing is, we, 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 in this sort of new woke religion that we've found ourselves in, and we're looking for heaven. Heaven is, is a world of no racism, mm-hmm. which everyone would like a world of no racism. But unfortunately, human beings are flaw- fallen and not You're going to have to kill an awful lot of humans. Population. Yeah, you're going to find that there are going to be some actual racists. And what you want to do is educate their children. That's all you want to do. You know, if you've got a nasty racist dude, what are you going to try and convince him of? But his kids, you can educate and hopefully his child can turn out not to be racist you know but we've done i'm so i mean i'm brazenly patriotic about this country i think we're amazing and i think you know america's kind of fallen for the next four years we'll see what happens china's powerful actually you've got really i love the fact that you get your own um <laughs> soldiers get their get to choose the color of their own um, combat gear now that sounds brilliant. yes yes china is so licking it, their chops at the moment China's just going, this is great. Um, and we've got, so I think England needs, we need to look at England and go, what do you guys think? And I think you need to go, well, we believe that we must stand freely together and we, and, and we see all men and women un, equal under the law. I mean, what's so complicated about that crap? That's a 75% issue in, in our country. It's, it's almost like um, you should so do is, the things that you've been doing for a long time, something like that. See if, see if that thousand years, see if that sort of 900 years since the Magna Carta was worth carrying on, pursuing. Or hang on a minute. No, let's just tear the whole thing down and start again. What do you want to start with, leftists? Nothing, just fire and chaos. I'm like, no, And quotas. Don't fire, chaos, and quotas. Don't forget the quotas. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, must remember the quotas. Where does, where does Brexit <laughs> fit into all of this? And do you feel freer now than you did say, well, I guess not because of lockdowns, but putting lockdowns aside, would you feel a little freer now? I think Brexit is amazing. I didn't vote for Brexit. I voted to remain because I was just like, why change it? You know, it's sort of my vibe. But now that I've seen how duplicitous and evil the European Union have been, certainly over the vaccine stuff and over Northern Ireland, Brexiteers are now probably just below deplorable, just above deplorable status. So you wouldn't spit at them in the streets, but you would try and have them cancelled from, from work. Um, yeah, Brexit was a very big central cultural issue for our country. So, um, you know, there's still people who maraud around online. Actually, most of the bullies have a European flag in their, um, in their Twitter bio, and it says FBPE, follow back pro-Europe. And um, I think Brexit has, has divided the country, but I imagine... That 52% that voted Brexit are probably now, if you, if you did that vote again, I think you'd find it probably be more 60-40. So you think people, people so, realize think that being in charge of their own lives is better than outsourcing it to Brussels? Crazy. Outsourcing it to an unelected body? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, it's, um, I think it's been really good. I'm really, I think it's like, like exciting, but the pro- problem is Boris Johnson's had this chance to go, right, we've done Brexit, what are we going to look like? What are we going to be as a country? And instead he's gone like, okay, darling, more wind yeah. farms? More wind farms so and, and dolphins? Yeah, or- <laughs> well, what's the deal with Boris? I think a lot of people thought he was going to be much more bullish and bold than he's been, and it sounds like that just kind of hasn't happened. Mistress nut nut. Yeah, his his girl. Yeah, yeah, his girl. His his girlfriend is um, she's a, she's an entirely new level of woke. God, and he's got a load of kids apparently who are also woke because Boris is Boris was never good at knowing how many children he had exactly. <laughs> so um, he's um, 
he does a good line in it, right? But he's, the thing is, he's, he's a trained classicist. So if you've got a national health service here going, we're going to rename breastfeeding, chest feeding, you're like, come on, dude, you're a classical linguist. You, you should care about language. But he's just like, Zoo. so he's all about dolphins and wind turbines, which is great for when it's windy. <laughs> I can't tell. Are you, are you hopeful or pessimistic? Generally speaking, I just, I'm, opt, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm optimistic, but I find this whole thing so amusing. It's so difficult not to find it mad. Do you know what I mean? You're sitting there going, are we sitting through a very important period of history? We yeah. are. I never thought I'd watch it. My dad is 81 and he said to me the other day, I was like, how do you feel? And he went, I'm just glad I'll be dead soon. <laughs> I'm so glad I won't, be, I won't be around when the fire starts. I'm like, oh, dad. Yeah. But he does know you're trying so, to put out the fire, so. Yeah, and he's cool, my dad. Like, he's he's the, he's the a good inspiration for me. So we walk a lot, uh, you know, and we talk, and he, he's smart about these things. So we can, we can put the fire out. I think ultimately what will happen is people will just go, stop. And I think my mates who've got kids who are like 16, 15, 16, they're not woke yeah. at all. In fact, they hate them. That, that seems to be the new thing, that, that the Zoomers, like that generation, the, the upper teens right now, that they're going to reject this stuff with a boldness that somehow, well, certainly the, the baby boomers failed on and, you know, we're roughly the same age that our, our Gen Z people failed on, but, but that they won't, hopefully. Yeah, I think, I think they, are, they are the hope. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos, isn't it? It's going to be like the... It's almost like the French Revolution, but the wind up, the thing that I find so terrifying about it is you're constantly goading because obviously we get America about two months later. So you've now gone from white privilege to white supremacy and we're now getting the white supremacy thing. And you're saying this to like one of the poorest constituencies in the country. So white working class boys in England, chances of them going to university are very, very low. So you're turning around to a bunch of poor white kids and saying, check your privilege. And then you've also got an, a whole load of communities from Asia all the way across from India to China who don't get included in Black Lives Matter. So it's like, it's so divisive and it's so unpleasant. So I think it should be stood up against. I mean, I'm, it's just unfair that I'm kind of blonde and blue eyed because <laughs> it <would> be, <laughs> it's just exactly the wrong skin color makeup to make the, the opposing or argument. it's exactly the right one because it's just enough of this and that's why i wanted to have you on the show because you aren't afraid of this thing like you had your your moment and you didn't run a lot of people they put that apology out there and you never hear from them again and, and you didn't do it uh what else should we tell people about the Re reclaim party and and how they can help you and get word out there and all that good stuff well, um, you can you can go. We, we're not accepting donations at the moment because I want people to see that I am working rather than getting freebies. Um, so you can just spread the word, man. All I've been saying to when someone says, "How can I help you?" is I say, "Find someone you disagree with and go and have a conversation with them." That's the best thing you can do to help the reclaim party and actually your own culture and your society stay stay the right way up. Lawrence Fox, you are a fierce liberal in the best sense of liberal for whatever for whatever sense that word still has you are you are the best type so thanks for doing this we're, we're going to link obviously to the to the party down below and uh good luck and can i host the debate between you and sadiq you think uh, you think he'd come on the show what do you think what do you think it, you 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 should invite him on the show because i think that he's so keen on being right on and you know you're super you, you know uh, would he know It'd be, I'd be really interested in seeing he doesn't really do interviews. Like even the other day when someone was trying to ask him, because he's closed off all the neighborhoods in London as well, right? So he's gone, if it's a, not an essential journey, you won't make it because I will just close off all the neighborhoods. So these people were trying to talk to him about it. Go, but why do you get to choose if it's an essential journey? And he just walked, he has like six, he's like a mafia boss, got six security guards, fleet of Range Rovers, all on the taxpayer dollar. He's, he's, he's quite a character. Man, you, I would like to. Yeah, you got your work cut out for you. Well, I, I do hope it happens. We're going to link to Reclaim Party down below. Lawrence, good luck, man. Peace, brother.
If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about international issues instead of nonstop yelling, check out our international playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.